Everybody's in a hurry, my friends. And when you get there, you're two minutes early, and you're still bored, don't know what to do with life. Going faster does not equal wisdom. In fact, it's contrary. <laughs> Going faster does not equal wisdom. I'll say this one more time. Going faster does not equal wisdom. Remember, the tortoise beat the hare in a race. And the squirrel spends all spring, summer, and fall gathering nuts just to lay around all winter. Playing and skipping and enjoying itself in the forest. I bet you don't take all winter off, three months off every year, like the squirrel. Ask yourself, why is that? Well, the answer is very simple. Going faster... Going faster does not equal wisdom. Let me take you over this next hill because it's very beautiful. There's someone in a camel van with two spare tires on the top. They're going slower in life. They're waking up to a cloudy sunrise beach experience. And I bet they're very happy. So isn't that the reason you go to work? Is try, you're trying to find joy? You say, no, I'm trying to make my truck payment. Well... When you got the truck payment, you thought the truck would bring you joy. So you went out and got a job. If you bring home $350 a week after taxes, you are as good as qualified here at ABC Motors. <laughs> so you thought that would bring you joy getting in a big truck. In a fancy house and it didn't bring you joy if you're honest with yourself so I was asked once by someone who dug a hole for themselves in life how do I get out of a hole I said stop digging put the shovel down and stand still Their reaction was, wow, that was profound. I said, it's not profound, it's simple. The answer is always simple. It's only profound to you because you're stuck in the hole panicking and going too fast with lots of anxiety. Going faster does not equal success. Unless you're an Olympic track star then going faster equals success. But you look at a basketball court. I don't even like sports myself, but you look, it's a good metaphor, example. How come the basketball you know, players don't just run back and forth as fast as they can? Same with football. How come they don't run back, as, back and forth as fast as they can? Because they need to strategically, whoops, they need to strategically have a plan. They need to go across the field with a strategic plan. Do they have guys that can run fast? Sure they do. But it doesn't mean they'll win the game. You still got to figure out how to catch that ball when all the other players are trying to figure out how to knock you on your butt. That's a good metaphor for life. You see, life is trying to figure out how to attack you and destroy you. The Bible says the enemy comes to kill, K-I-L-L, -L, 
kill, steal, and destroy you. That's what the enemy does. He is the author of all lies. And he offered Jesus Christ all the kingdoms of this world. When Jesus, would ha as a man, was at, at his weakest point after 40 days of fasting and praying in the desert. The devil took him and offered him all the kingdoms of the earth if he would only bow down and worship him, the devil. Well, you know the rest of the story, Jesus says, it is written, worship God only. So how did Jesus start his successful ministry? By standing still and fasting and praying for 40 days. Wow. Does that sound like a minister today? No, it doesn't. Ministers today, God bless them, they got a crummy situation in a crummy world. They got it hard. Ministers today say, we need to go faster. In fact, we all need to go as fast as we can and get a car wash, get a quilt you know, um, operation, go a quilt making operation. We need to get a preschool. We need to get health care. We... Whoa. Jesus stood still for 40 days and 40 nights fasting and praying in the desert. Ministers today spend the next 40 days and 40 nights trying to solve every person's problem in the entire church or trying to figure out ways to make money. So I will say again, going faster in life is not going to guarantee you success. I will end with this. It's a very um, seldom thought of Bible verse. In the Bible, there was this city and it was besieged by its enemy. And they were all going to die, the whole city. But there was an old man in the city, but a wise man. Very wise. Now, I, how do you gain wisdom? This man must have been following the Lord. Fearing the Lord. Following God's word, that's how you get wisdom. So there was a man full of wisdom, the Bible says who by his wisdom saved the city and all of its residents. He saved everyone. And then it says, but a short time after that, no one remembered. The old man passed away and no one even remembered what happened and everything just went on as fast as it possibly could again. You know, that's a good metaphor. You get going so fast in this world that you even forget to protect yourself like this city. There are successful countries all over the world financial successful they don't even have an army they got like a small army and they rely upon the United States for protection because they have no army yet they are financially successful but they don't even protect themselves so I'll just end before 10 minutes here going faster will never guarantee you success. Why did God make the lilies of the field? Why did God even give flowers a smell? I mean, you know, they smell incredible. The way God put the flower together with the nose, you know, the way you smell. Why did God give flowers a smell? So you would stop and smell the flowers, my friend. It almost sounds too simple to be true. 
Why did God make the ocean so beautiful? So you would stop and look at it. Why does God take a hundred years to grow that tree in your front or backyard at your house? So you will stop and watch. Why is one of the most beautiful things on earth, a caterpillar or even a butterfly, go so slow and delicate, vulnerable? Because God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, wants you to slow down and look at them. And then give thanks and then give praise. Stop, look, and then give thanks, then give praise. Thank you, Father, for all these things you have given me. But you can only say, thank you, Father, for all these things you have given me. You can only say that. And I say this with humility and gentleness. You can only say that if you slow down long enough to listen to God and look at his creation. Enjoy your family slowly. You know, one, ch one day, let me tell you, your children are going to be out of the house and you're going to say, I wish I spent more time with my children and less time at work. You know the old saying, nobody on their deathbed, they're in the hospital dying. The doctor comes in and says, okay, today's the day. You have a few hours left. You will be gone by supper time. Nobody jumps up and yells, take me to the office as fast as you can. I forgot to put staples in my stapler.